Hello and uh, welcome to this curl 785.0 release video presentation. So I um, am of course Daniel, you have seen me before. Um, I work on WolfSL, well, for, with, on WolfSSL and I do curl support full time. I work on curl all days, every day and I'm the, I would say the lead developer. I started a project. Uh, 24 years ago. So this is a normal curl release presentation and I'm going to try to do um, to do it the standard way. I'm going to start talking about uh, some numbers in, in the project and uh, going through some security things for this release. Just one, basically. Uh, some of the new features changes done, bug fixes, some of my favorites and something about what is coming up next in this um, world of curl well probably what's we're what we're aiming for to land for the next release this is release 210 uh, yes i've done it a few times uh, by now it's fun so we had a lot of people participate this uh, time around we saw contributions from 79 people mentioned in the thanks now out of which 38 were new so quite a lot of people are there 44 people contributed code or commits at least that we merged into git 22 new a lot of people thank you everyone for for the participation so we're a big team we've been doing this curl thing for a while uh, in this particular release of course it took a little bit longer than we usually do we use we usually do them every eight weeks so 56 days is the normal release cycle this was turned out to be 65 because it was a bit of an extended one a week and two days extra um, so we probably managed to land a little bit of extra bug fixes a few extra this time so 8930 days since we did the first curl release we have security advisories in the curl project and of course uh, when you read about curl uh, security advisories you always go to the list that we provide in curl in the curl project and because i think we provide the most details the most accurate uh, uh, descriptions of curl related issues so rely on our documentation i think that's my advice at least so this is the security problem for the for this release uh, <clears throat> reported by axel chong and we call it cve 2022 35252 control coding cookie denial of service so so explained uh, it is like you know when curl receives a cookie from a server and you extract instructed curl that you want it to receive cookies it would of course receive cookies and then replay them on, on subsequent requests where they match, you know, the like cookies work you know, usually. But since the, uh, cur the curl cookie receiver was very liberal, basically received whatever the cookie uh, server sent, including cookies that would contain control bytes. That is, you know, byte codes below 32 ASCII, byte, you know, one, two, three, four, five, not nine, well, nine is fine. I mean, nine is tab. Uh, but uh, a few of the others and then when you would reset curl would send those cookies back to a server it would of course then include those control codes uh, but most servers or at least many servers these days they reject such requests any request that contains these control codes so basically if curl would receive those cookies and it would send them back it would get a 400 response uh, so that would be a, a f sort of a denial of service. It is a denial of service. And of course, if it would only affect that particular server that responded with those cookies, it wouldn't have been a problem. But since you can set cookies for other sites, basically, you know, you know your sibling site or your sister site or whatever, you, whatever name you use for it. So a.example.com can set cookies that b.example.com would receive. Um, so this could then make one server basically deny deny service of another service because of the cookie thing here a silly little thing but uh, axel shong uh, figured it out and reported it <clears throat> he will get a reward it's a, a severity level low so 
he is expected to get 480 US dollars as a reward for for his um, great work on this thank you um, so uh, going forward then the security stuff um, read up about the details if you want to figure out more that that bug of course has been in curl since a very very long time um, it has the curious effect though that originally when we in added that code most servers would not send a 400 response on that kind of you know replay so at during the time while it has been there this has intrude i mean this has become a bug over time so maybe it wasn't actually a, a, a problem in the beginning but it has turned out to be a problem <clears throat> anyway new things this time around we add things or change things uh, sometimes in curl and this time we did three things which i have made four items in this little list here first we have s channel support for tls 103 s channel is the windows native tls solution so if you build curl on windows or for windows you can uh, ask it to use s channel and then you don't have to support, uh, use any third party tls library which I mean, it makes the binary smaller, it may, may be more convenient, and, and, and uh, for example, if you use curl that ships with Windows 10 or Windows 11, it is built uh, only to use the S-channel backend. And starting now, we can support TLS 1.3 in that, which I know it's a bit late, everyone assumed that it already was there, but it wasn't, and you had to do some tweaks to get it going, but now it does. And in this release, we add two new options called curl opt protocols str and curl opt reader protocols str and they're a bit of a mouthful to pronounce so I, maybe i shouldn't pronounce them but anyway they are replacements for the for the options uh, named the same without the underscore str extension and the reason is that uh, i created these options a long time ago and they accept an argument that is a bit mask and that bit mask has to have all the uh, protocols that you support and it has to have them within 32 bits and annoyingly we might cross the 32 bit boundary soon because of reasons so you could argue that we don't actually support 32 protocols but the way we count them in this bit mask we do or we might we might do going forward i'll mention that in in a second the, the protocols that might make us bump that limit so i ins uh, added these options ahead of time to make sure that we don't get a problem with that 32-bit boundary going forward so you should switch to these if you want to restrict which protocols curl should work with when you provide a url so you can basically say i just want to work with http and uh, scp and then you provide whatever url and it will only accept those urls using those protocols you specified so you can you don't have to do the filtering yourself of, of URLs you use. Uh, we also got support for Quick uh, via WolfSSL. So now you can build curl uh, to use WolfSSL for TLS for the, all other protocols, TLS related stuff. And you can build WolfSSL uh, and GTCP2 to do Quick uh, and HP3. <clears throat> so basically, uh, another option to uh, for, for the build setup when you want to do quick in HTTP 3 with curl. There, there are now a few different ones to s select from. I will do a separate... No, never mind. <coughs> in this release, um, we count 165 bug fixes. A lot of those, of course. <coughs> Many of them minor corrections of phrases in documentation, build script fixes, but there are a few that I want to highlight that are pretty much the ones that I think are most interesting, possibly the ones that most users will find most interesting or relevant or, or uh, yeah, exciting, depending on, on who you are. So the, the first one, uh, <coughs> let's take a look at um, let's see we're talking about <coughs> i fixed which is kind of interesting this is a long-standing uh, socket leak memory leak thing in 
and uh, when you do um, when you build curl to use uh, threaded the name the threaded name resolver which is the default one uh, on curl um, and you would run out of memory in when setting up that sec that new thread for doing you could actually leak a socket uh, and that therefore memory so it was a socket leak on out of memory and it, this was only mostly curious because it's been this is a very old problem and i sort of fell over it by mistake and actually found another <coughs> so uh, related uh, memory leak in out of memory for others uh, name resolving too so better uh, less memory leaks on out of memory problems if you build curl yourself you will ob immediately notice this improvement that uh, we improved the performance of this script called gen.pl it is <coughs> the main script that builds and generates the curl man page the, the curl man page is called curl.1 in the in the and it gets generated at build time and this script is actually it runs now i mean maybe i, I mean there are orders of magnitudes faster so maybe it's 10 times faster maybe it's uh, 30 times it's, uh, it's a very big difference which uh, it's quite noticeable if you build curl yourself and of course it was a bit silly before and this sort of removed a lot of silliness and now it's much faster much more convenient when you build curl uh, another thing that is uh, fixed in the build is that <coughs> uh, when you specify when you run configure and you specify a tls library uh, i want to use this tls library and maybe you specify a path to it even uh, you can do that and you know you can specify a number of different tls libraries and if the, the configure script then would check for that tls library but fail to find it maybe you specify the wrong path maybe you forgot to install it maybe you spell it wrong uh, then configure would just say hey i didn't find it i'll just disable tls in the build and, and move on and uh, and i think that was a bit counterproductive so it took longer for users to notice this uh, omission or just or decision uh, now, if you have specified a TLS library and it won't find it, it'll just fail and say, hey, I couldn't find it. If you really want to build without TLS, do this or correct your, your configure line. I think this is much more convenient. Another th thing we did in configure that sh really shouldn't be notice noticeable, detectable by anyone, really, if you don't read the code, is that I um, rewrote uh, and introduce this new function in configure called curl size of and this is sort of silly but i uh, i rewrote this this is this is a configure macro that checks the size of types uh, when you run configure you know how big is long long how big is size underscore t and the reason i rewrote it is that we had an, uh, previously had another function for this macro which was uh, it had a gpl license and a, a configure exception in the license that was totally fine so i mean the, the exception says that we are allowed to use the output from from uh, our tool however we want but and the gpl would only affect that particular shipping configure other tools code so it wasn't really it didn't affect the product it didn't affect anyone who was using curl or libcurl in any products anywhere but still, just a mention of GPL uh, in curl got me questions and, and, and users who confused things and really didn't understand uh, the exception, uh, the license exception in that file. So, <clears throat> and just, yeah, it was just safer and easier to remove the mention of GPL from curl altogether. So this was the only one, only file that mentioned GPL and there's no mention left now. So that, uh, no traces of GPL mentions left in curl after I rewrote this. So this is now my code is now curl licensed. Um, <clears throat> so a bit of an and a bit unnecessary. It took me a few hours to do, but uh, it removes confusions and questions and uh, you know just just um, convenient. I found another uh, basically a. Um, memory leak because we forgot to close uh, one of the sockets when we did happy eyeballs with quick you know happy eyeballs when you try two different connections at the same time ipv4 ipv6 and you go with the one that connects first so the ones that loses you should of course close and you know get rid of 
but in the case of quick it um, we forgot about it so we, we left a dangling socket there leaking it losing memory <coughs> HTTP 3 is still experimental in curl of course so fixed a little cookie parser thing which of course just goes to show that it's tricky to be compliant with all uh, everything it turns out that we haven't really fixed how if you got a blank domain in the set cookie header we did the wrong thing you know um and configure more configure fixes uh, last release in 7.84.0 we introduced this thing called atomics or we fixed curl global init to be thread safe and we did that by, by using this atomic thing which is a c11 feature so all code in curl is c89 but this is a c11 feature but if you have it we can use it and we actually did several tiny mistakes when it came to atomics in that release so we this is one of the fixes we did and we did several other fixes to improve how we detect and use atomics so that curl global in it actually works on more platforms in a more convenient way um, starting in this uh, release we did fixes for the digest http authentication so we had some memory leak and we had fixed the opaque parsing uh, thing um, <clears throat> I think there were some more there were some more other related digest fixes and I think we might have some more pending digest fixes coming too so there are more of those tiny tweaky things that some implementation do things slightly differently related to my rewriting the configure macro I mentioned we also removed the example called curl x.c for license reasons again another this was an example with a specific own license so this was the only file in the file tree that had this um, it was B, it was a bsd version of the of the license but still this was the only file that had it so by removing this file we could remove that license and that mention of that license and also this example was very complicated it, and con I call it convoluted in my commit message, but it was a bit too big, too messy. I don't think it really helped users. We, I mean, that it's a fine, it was fine code, but we don't need it as examples really. It was a little bit too, too much. We now resolve, uh, this is fun for, um, we now align with more how the browsers do it when you get a host name called whatever dot local host you know my own blah blah dot local host uh, anything that is dot local host will now resolve to 127.0.0.1 and colon colon one there is an rfc that says we should do it like that the browsers do it like that so we sort of try to unify that this is probably how we should do it <clears throat> going forward so you see lots of fun bug fixes in this release uh, we uh, slowly you know we continue to improve how we work with hyper so when you build curl to use hyper the it is almost on par there are some tiny details that details that differ and you probably will never notice them but one of them that we fixed in this release is that we do folded multi-line headers better or we support it better with hyper you know folded header lines that's the old deprecated way to to do HTTP headers when the when you can sort of split up the headers on multiple lines sort of lines in the HTTP response <clears throat> it's deprecated it's uh, you should not use them but still you know they were once supported so they will always remain somewhere uh, coverity in uh, I updated the converter you know the static code analyzer coverity they upgraded their version maybe uh, yeah this month i think and suddenly we, it actually detected two problems immediately in the code uh, about related to sftp and these two commands called a time and m time then access time and modified time and you can actually set them on a file over sftp so basically you know set this modified time on this file remotely and mm, it, it they are both related to the good old 32-bit time epoch time limit thing 
they were slightly different for the different SSH libraries, but they were both related to that depending on platforms and everything. So they will have trouble on some platforms or all platforms going uh, beyond 2038 the year. <clears throat> I mean, if we try that now, they will fail, but they still have those, those the libraries have those problems. I found, I've filed issues with those libraries, so hopefully they will adapt a fix and we will fix that going forward before uh, 2038, hopefully. Uh, this was a fun bug. There. So when you do connect only, you know, curl opt connect only, you ask curl to just connect to this site, don't do anything else. So you can implement your own protocol, basically. You ask curl just to, you use curl just to set up connection, which is a bit of a, you know, yeah maybe you use curl to do a very small thing but anyway uh, if you would do that in a multi-interface way so you could do that and uh, then when you would use it and you would remove it from the multi-handle um, <clears throat> basically the connection would remain in in, in the multi-handle until you close the multi-handle because it would never get closed any by anything else since when you kill the easy handle later uh, it doesn't have any association left to the connection. So th that, that would basically leave a pending unusable connection for a long time in vain because nobody can actually reuse it again. So it would just sit there and, and then get closed eventually, but unnecessarily long, slow. Uh, and now <clears throat> if you use connect only, when, when you do multi-remove handle, it, get, it will get closed and removed immediately. Just uh, saving up resources, better, no point in leaving it around. <clears throat> if you build curl uh, on Apple devices, and this is a change that we might want to go uh, on, on pretty much all platforms except Windows. Uh, we use pipe now instead of socket pair for the wake up functionality in uh, for the curl multi weight function. Turns out that when you use socket pair on an Apple device, and then I don't mean the Mac OS, but all the you know uh, iPad and iOS and TV and watch and everything, they can actually kill the socket pair when you when the application is in the background, uh, but they don't kill the pipe. I don't understand the logic, uh, <laughs> but I'm not sort of instead of questioning, it just have, it was very easy to just allow a build time uh, conditional. Um, Build. So if you build it on Apple platforms, it'll use pipe instead of socket pair. Pipe is probably better for most uh, platforms. So I'm sure we're going to try pipe more going forward. I did a change now that so that when you create a multi uh, handle, we now get a, um, we now use a larger DNS hash table than we do for other handles, basically. I'm thinking the, the thinking is this when you use a multi handle, the chances are higher that you will use many host names. And for many host names, you have a it'll work better and faster if you have a slightly larger DNS uh, hash table. So it'll now by default use a larger one for multi handles than it uses for easy handles. Just for performance reasons, really, because it used it very small, all it was always very small, no matter what. So it Sometimes, as the user who submitted the bug said, when you have thousands of names, it, it you know it gets noticeably slow. Now it is less slow for thousands of names in the DNS uh, cache. So okay, two more bugs. Bear with me. Uh, we now reject host names longer than uh, sixteen bits. In, in I mean, <laughs> this is a fun thing, right? Because whoever you uh, Basically, you, you you never use host names this long, of course, because how would you? Um, you could. I there's no, there's no limit in any specification anywhere. I mean, you, your URLs they don't have any length limits really. Um, they may have in practice because, uh, for example, you can send that long requests to browsers. Uh, no, sorry, to uh, web servers. But uh, anyway there could be those that accept it and 
DNS only accepts 253 bytes uh, hostname, so you can't resolve such a long name with DNS anyway. But if you would have them in etc hosts, I guess in theory it could work. The, the thing is that I added this restriction is that with SNI for TLS, you can only provide a name that is this long. So you can't do TLS with names longer than this. So I figured I would just set this limit now because it would otherwise we would have to you know error out in er, error in runtime if you use the longer name and try to use TLS. But maybe we don't have to have those checks everywhere. Maybe we could just say this is fine. If anyone ever has a problem with this restriction, we can have a debate on, on, on what to do instead. But I suspect we won't have that discussion in a while. I also more of a standard thing that I'm trying to do all over and iterate going back to, I reduced the size of several stuck fields, quite a few actually in, in curl, both the easy struct, but also I think this time mostly the connect struct that we uh, set up for every connection we use in curl. So it is now, I don't know, maybe 20, 30, 40 bytes smaller, which may sound silly, but we have a lot of users on tiny devices, so actually every byte counts for, for a lot of them. So this is good, I think. Uh, and it also sometimes, you know, we, as I mentioned, I added that size to the DNS uh, t uh, hash table. So maybe I can also, you know, compensate a little by adding a little, removing a little. So maybe it'll even out so that we don't particularly grow much in memory usage. <clears throat> So going forward, the next release is likely to become 7.86.0 because we have changes in the books planned to do <clears throat> and uh, pending work changes that might then bump the minor number uh, or will bump the number if we merge them is primarily that I'm working quite hard with right now uh, is WebSockets. So WebSocket support is coming to curl. The question is just when we merge it. It's going to be merged with an experimental tag, of course, so you will have to enable it by default to get it. And my initial work that I'm going, um, I'm hoping to land once we open the feature window here again, is um, libcurl focused. So it'll add support for the URLs and uh, libcurl support for them. Uh, and then I will continue to do more, of, uh, a few other separate pull requests going forward to to improve the command line tool support for it and so on. But I'm very keen on getting uh, early reports and testers to try it out once it uh, comes in, in, into the master branch. I'm also going to remove support for NPN. This has been um, documented for a while in the deprecated document and we have mentioned it, we've talked about it, there's a pending PR. NPN was a feature to negotiate, well, the precursor to HTTP2 called Speedy, which sort of came in 2011, 2012 timeframe. We, you could also negotiate HTTP2 with this in the early days. Uh, after the early days, we replaced NPN with ALPN basically, but um, curl has, has had the support then to have both either NPN or APN ever since those early days. And these days, the, the browsers have removed support for NPN several years ago. So no browser supports NPN anymore, and uh, only curl does. And we will just, you know, silently get rid of it. And uh, I don't think there are any users left, and uh, even fewer servers that actually support it and use it or, or would demand it. So ALPN is the way to go, that's the way we do, and so I don't think anyone will miss NPN. <clears throat> we also have this proposed uh, feature, um, new feature called curl opt quick exit. The name of course maybe will not stick, maybe we will change it, I, I don't know, but uh, the curl opt quick exit is um, um, yeah, it exits curl quicker. Uh, no, but uh, it's actually a lib curl option then to say that I don't care about the potential memory leak that could happen if we don't wait for the name resolve thread. 
you know when we do threaded name resolves uh, we, we fire up a second thread to do the name resolving you know the, the main the main job of curl is still in the same thread that gets the api call from the application but we fire up a new thread that that performs the name resolve call and that is a name resolve function in glibc typically or in the libc where whoever provides the the name resolve function and sometimes that function just sits there for a long time you know we can abort it safely or in with using any particular platform uh, independent means we just have to wait until it's done and then it's done and then we say oh it failed but if if you have a really short timeout for example you want to try this transfer for 30 milliseconds and that uh, name resolve decides to hang there for two seconds then curl can't do much than just to wait for that thread to finish and then we can clean everything up and return so that's a sort of a known issue. It's been a constant annoyance to people because we actually introduced this. We have to wait a few years ago. Basically, before that, we would always leak the memory in that in this case. And now we're uh, considering introducing an option to allow that leakage to happen. You know, if you're if you're, for example, the um, curl tool, you don't have to wait for that uh, thread to be done you can just go back and because curl will exit anyway it will clean up all the resources anyway when you exit you don't have to wait first and then exit because just an unnecessary wait so that sort of that situation might be common for a lot of other tools applications as well so this is a way to allow them to quick exit potentially leak memory but ignore it forget about it it's fine so i think we're going to to merge this at least uh, the functional I'm I don't know about the name I'm, I'm very curious and keen on getting better suggestions for the name um, but then uh, otherwise I think the functionality is uh, is good and, and uh, requested and wanted so the plan is now to stick to the schedule there are eight weeks wait a minute that's wrong date up there it should say october 25 <clears throat> so yes if we stick to the schedule we will release 7.86.0 on october 25 not at all at what it says on this slide but um, that's fine you just listen to me and you don't read the slides okay um, and of course as a, a, a constant reminder we plan to do curl 8 on curl's 25th birthday that's in march 2023 we're closing in a little bit of a, more than half a year left um, it will not be any revolutionary change it will be one of these evolutionary changes like all our releases are so that's where we're going of course if you need any help any support if you use it commercially or just need quicker help than you get otherwise or whatever it is with curl i'm always available for uh, helping you with support contact us at wolf ssl and we will get you going you know i can help you pretty much already tomorrow in case you need it if you find any bugs you know spelling errors in the documentation silly things that's wrong important things that are wrong uh, whatever uh, report them uh, on the in our issue tracker on, on github and of course if you suspect a security problem instead that's still a bug but we manage them slightly differently and we encourage you to go to hackerone.com slash curl to uh, report suspected security problems and if we agree and we confirm with your <laughs> suspicions uh, we also promise you monetary rewards that are actually quite a lot of money if uh, depending on the severity level of course but um, <clears throat> report your suspected security problems and we will reward you we have a bunch of good, fun, trusted, uh, well, I, what should I say, um, great sponsors of Curl. These are all uh, from the top and, and down the, the, the main sponsors, the infrastructure sponsors, and then a gold sponsor at Elastic, and then a bunch of silver sponsors. Awesome companies that are helping us ship 
curl the way we do and pay for services, run things the way we want it. And yes, you if you want to support curl, you want to sponsor, you go to opencollective.com slash curl, or you can actually do that on, on github.com slash curl as well. It'll sort of end up in the same place anyway. So you decide. We appreciate all our great sponsors, of course. <clears throat> so this is curl uh, 7.850. August 30 August August 31 2022 and uh, until next time goodbye